Before I jump in and show you guys how to do it, just wanted to show you guys how it works. Stream Deck, the new one, QLab, running through my scenes. I can play, I can panic, show mode versus edit mode. Tons of cool stuff that you can do. And in this video, I will absolutely show you how to set this up and do this. And this is gonna be a part two, uh, kind of an update on my original video, which is how to hook up a Stream Deck and control QLab. That's it. Remember to like and subscribe. First, I wanted to show you as of January 24th, 2024, <laughs> my buddy Sam. Hey, how's it going, guys? Sorry it's a little bit loud right now, but uh, before I jumped in and kind of showed you guys how to do this, I wanted to make sure that you knew all of my current um, software and laptop firmware settings and uh, software versions. So my MacBook is on Sonoma, just updated that yesterday, and Companion is 3.2, the beta version. So this is the most current version of Companion. The first thing I want you guys to see on here is Companion. So we're not using the Stream Deck Elgato software. You're gonna go and download a uh, program called Companion from a company called BitFocus. It's free, they're awesome. Uh, the BitFocus Companion community is huge and couldn't say enough good things about them. So definitely check that out. Before we uh, jump into Companion though, I want you to launch QLab. So open up QLab, have something in there. And we're just gonna let this sit right there. Now I'm gonna open up Companion. And we're gonna launch the GUI. What I think everybody is missing in this video compared to the other videos is um, just IP addresses, like a local address. Um, people that aren't strong with any sort of networking skills or are just unfamiliar. It's just, as technology grows, things are becoming more uh, networking based and that just only expands what you can do. So we're gonna start this from the very, very beginning. <clears throat> in fact, I'm going to just wipe out uh, my old settings right now. And cool. So let's pretend this is the first time we are opening Companion. This is what you're going to see. I'm going to type in QLab right here. And as you can see, the status is connecting. So it hasn't actually connected to my Stream Deck yet. And that's because you need a target host IP. And I feel like this is just the number one thing people are missing. So you want to enter your local address for this configuration. Um, we can get into networking and stuff in greater detail. But right now, I have um, sorry, I have my Stream Deck just hooked up via USB to this MacBook. That's, that's it, right? And we want to use it that way. So uh, USB hooked up to the machine. This is our local address right here. So 127.0.0.1, and that may be different for your machine. That's just what the local address is for mine. Sorry to jump in here with kind of a crappy cell phone recording, cell phone audio, but when I was putting this video together for YouTube, I realized uh, it might be beneficial to show you a couple things, just if this is all new to you. One, where to find your local address um, that needs to be typed in, so let me show you that now. If we first launch Companion, uh, GUI interface, change network interface, right here, it's going to show you um, all of your uh, local IPs that are associated with your machine. Uh, local host right here, this is your local address, you can find it right there. And if I launch the GUI, you could find it right up in the search bar as well. So that's a couple places to find your local address. Another thing is just the target port. And if you're not a big networking guy, don't worry about this. Leave it exactly where it's at. Um, 
in the case of QLab. It's a 53,000 port 53000. And that's already done for you by default. And that's because that's the default control port for QLab. And I can show you if you launch QLab. And if you're a big networking guy, this will make more sense to you. If you just are trying to get your Stream Deck up and running, don't worry about this. Um, but if I click on Network, uh, Destinations Local Host, and here's the port. And by default, it's 53000. Leave it alone if you don't know what you're doing and you just want that to be controlled. If you're a big networking guy, um, yeah, there's where you can control your port. Uh, here's the networking... Networking preferences for QLab and the default port is 53000. And the wonderful people that worked on the companion module, by default, when you load your module in here, the target port is already 53000. So again, you don't have to even worry about that or change that. Just put in your local address. In my case, 1270.0. One and whatever yours is. We type that in, I hit save, and now we have a check mark. Now, you, if you don't have QLab open, if that program is closed, this status will be, um, you're gonna not be able to get a green check mark, it's not gonna be able to connect. Or it'll show, it'll, it just won't show connected until you open it. So you can type in that local address, um, hit enter, and then once you load QLab, then that'll populate. And I can show you that right now. So status is good to go. But if I exit the web GUI, and uh, by the way, BitFocus always needs to be running in the background. Don't uh, quit this, just hide it. And uh, if I save my QLab, quit. Um, if I go back into Companion, so launch the GUI, Warning, no workspaces. So that's because QLab is not open, but if I go back, open QLab. And that's just, I had some dead breaks. Don't worry about that, but. Now it's open again, and if I go back into my companion GUI, I have a green check mark. So let's add some buttons. And I'm going to shut this off so you guys can see my stream deck. Okay, let's make some buttons. Um, you can see the stream deck here. We've already made our QLab connection in buttons. Under presets, there's already a good amount. Um, I'm not going to show you everything. You guys could play around with this yourself and figure some things out. But let's just drop in some basic stuff. Some navigation, play, and pause. And if I exit the GUI, and again, you want to keep this running, so we hit hide. I can advance. I can. Eh, let's make a stop button. I didn't make a stop button, so let's do that. Launch your companion GUI again. Go to buttons. Boom. Now here you could already see that's playing and if I hit stop, it'll stop. I can move around, hit play, and it'll play. Let me show you one last thing before I conclude this and that is a, just one feature with the encoder and hopefully it inspires you to do something else on your own. If we launch the GUI and I go back to buttons, on this stream deck, think of this as a row one, row two, row three, and then this would be row four for the encoders. So uh, three zero right here, I'm gonna go to, uh, instead of presets, I'm gonna go to create a button. And here I'm going to rotary action, select that. And now 
rotate the knob left, rotate the knob right. So under left, if I go into here in the library, here's some QLab actions, and I can go to, I like previous queue, and then uh, rotate right, we can go to QLab, and I can go to next. So if I type in Q. Next queue. Now if I exit and I go back into QLab, if I rotate left, I can scroll up, I can scroll down. And that's just another cool feature now with the rotary knobs on Stream Deck. Hopefully this helped you out, um, especially if you're running current versions of everything and maybe the older tutorials aren't helpful to you. This will get you up and running and then, you know, play along. Try things out and uh, do some experimentation. Have fun. It's a great tool. Remember to like and subscribe.